shall we pray Heavenly Father we thank you for your goodness Thank you for your love We bless your name because your hand is upon us already And we pray Lord that this mighty hand And the anointing you have granted us Will continue in our lives in Jesus name Amen. You brought us here since the beginning of this week You've been imparting yourself, your grace, your power, your anointing upon our lives. We're praying, O oh Lord, all the impartation we have received, your goodness upon our lives, the glory of the Lord shining upon us. We pray, Lord, that the effect of it will continue to be seen in our ministries in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray that as we go back home, our own family members will see this anointing. Amen. We'll see the authority and power you have granted unto us as we go along the way whether we're traveling by road or by sea or by or traveling by air we we'll pray lord you sprinkle all those things that will carry us for the blood of jesus Amen. that every life will be protected and preserved in jesus name Amen. and we'll pray lord that the treasure you have given your people this treasure will continue Amen. There will be an overflow in every life in Jesus' name. Amen. In all the various church locations, in all the local governments and provinces, and in all the states and the regions, everywhere in every country, we we'll pray, Lord, we'll be hearing good news. Amen. Testimonies from everyone. Amen. That we will never be the same again in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray that your people, brothers and sisters, men and women, will be precious in your sight. Amen. And as you have taken hold of us, wanting to use us, we pray that you use us for your glory. Amen. Be glorified, O oh Lord, in everything we still do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much. We can sit down. Matthew chapter 5. We're looking at verse 16. Matthew chapter 5 verse 16 Let your light so shine Before men That they may see your good works And glorify your father Which is in heaven We started with this Matthew chapter 5 In a special series That the Lord has led me To share with you at this time And we saw that Jesus Christ Actually revealed the father and revealed himself and revealed his grace unto us one he has seen us as part of his own people we must understand that that you are in the kingdom is not an accident that you are a minister is not an accident and that you are here at this time is not an accident because we're told in the word of god that God knew all the things that will be even before they came to pass. He knew you. And he knew what he'll call you to do. In Acts chapter 15 verse 18. <clears throat> Acts chapter 15 verse 18. Known unto God are all his works from the beginning of the world. Known unto God. Are all his works from the very beginning of the world thank god then you are not an accident you are not in this world accidentally you are not in the church accidentally and deeper life as an entity is not an accidental occurrence that accidentally something came up you call deeper life known unto god all his works from the very beginning of the world and that you now in particular you have a part in the ministry and you have a part in this conference and congress that's not an accident and seeing the multitudes they saw you ahead of time as part of the multitudes multitudes of disciples multitudes of ministers multitudes of the people that will be fishers of men that will carry the gospel of the lord to all different parts of the world wherever you are today don't think it's an accident you are here at the headquarters whatever you are doing that's not an accident 
you are there in the stage any stage that's an accident you're in the region or local government anywhere you are as jesus beheld the multitudes he saw you and then it says and he went up into a mountain <coughs> he went up into a mountain so that he'll be set he'll be prepared to teach you and to reveal unto you his very mind what he has in mind and what he has for you to carry out and then we're told his disciples came unto him his disciples came unto him that's not accidental either you know as you think about the disciples of the lord jesus christ the way they came to him and then you begin to think but judas also was there yes that's not an accident either that judas iscariot was one of the disciples it's not an accident have you not read the psalms have you not seen what was written about judas iscariot even in the psalms you know we pastors and preachers we think only the good people are there by divine appointment even the bad people too even the judas iscariot too they are not there by accident god knew it ahead of time and those things surprise us you read the bible how it must have come as a surprise to john or to james or to peter or to andrew what's this man finding here why do we have judas iscariot here it's not an accident and then eventually acts of the apostles chapter one when peter was going to stand up in the midst of the people he said now we know now we know nothing happens by accident in the kingdom of god even judas iscariot was not an accident he was numbered among us but in the psalms we're told let his bishopric be given to another man he had been predicted it's not an accident and therefore all the disciples came the good ones and the bad ones but i make up my mind i'm going to be a good disciple but you know you know preachers uh, we, we need to tell you all this because if you don't know if you are in a church location where you have some john's there some peters there some james's there and some judas's there then you give up a seed god what are you looking at you brought me to a church like this and i'm to pastor a church like this look at that one and god said yes i know he'll be there don't touch him leave him there let him continue when he finishes his assignment then i'll take care of him and so jesus saw the multitudes and then he went up to the mountain and when he was said his disciples came unto him and he opened his mouth and he opened his mouth you know it, it shows how he regarded them because you see jesus christ i told you before i'll tell you again did not always open his mouth as you look at luke chapter 23 verse 8 luke 23 verse 8 and when herod saw jesus he was exceeding glad for he was desirous to see him of a long season because he had heard many things of him and he hoped to have seen some miracle done by him and he questioned with him in many words but he answered him nothing and we're fortunate we come before the lord and then the lord opens his mouth because you know jesus doesn't always open his mouth and it's not just because of desire it's not just because of the thirst it's not just because of the passion it's not just because of the hunger he was hungry he was desirous he was passionate for a long time he wanted to see this jesus and he wanted to see a miracle performed and then he questioned with him in many 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 words and jesus opened not his mouth jesus answered nothing how grateful i am that when i open the pages of the scripture and then the lord opens my heart and he opens the scriptures i say lord i thank you 
you have not counted me like Aaron and you have not counted me like the people you don't want to open your mouth whenever they come in your presence and as you come to the church here as you come to hear the word of God and the multitudes gather and the disciples gather and you happen to be one of them and Jesus favoring you he opened his mouth and began to say in teaching you blessed are the poor in spirit he says isn't this a new year and you want blessing this year what's the path of blessing this year I told you before if you continue to do what you have always done you will receive what you have always received if you continue to sow the seed you have always sown you will continue to reap the harvest you always reap if you continue to act the way you always acted you will see the consequence as you always saw because it's the law of sowing and reaping it says this is a new year a new day and then it says in this new day blessed are the poor in spirit for they shall have enter the kingdom of heaven blessed are they that mourn blessed are they that mourn i had a, a youth leader not in our church she was a teacher in a school in the stage and then the children the teenagers they came on holidays and she happened to come to lagos and then she entered a bus and then she saw one of her students who had been born again at school as she saw her she saw that she had changed the worldliness was too much and she said what a few weeks of holidays i knew what this girl was when she was in school and then she when they got down from the bus right on the road there the sister confronted that girl and said so and so and then she couldn't talk again on the side of the road she started crying she said what how about salvation how about christian life how about what i taught you publicly she couldn't hold herself she cried and cried and they get just stood there looking at her teacher secondary school teacher but also the youth leader in that school teaching them in a bible class and then that child started weeping i'm telling you here in lagos at right at the bus stop there and as the girls started crying to you both of them knelt down and right there at the bus stop that girl prayed through again to salvation blessed are they that mourn for they shall be comforted and how joyful and i happen to know this sister myself precious sister because of the concern because of the burden because of the mourning for they that go astray then he said blessed are they that mourn for they shall be comforted blessed are the meek for they shall inherit the earth the meek you know anything we're going to inherit in this world if it's coming from god it's not going to come by being aggressive by being violent by being powerful and by being kind of trampled on everybody run everybody down if you're going to get anything from god and think about the church if you're going to get anything in the church of god it's not going to be by this attitude of you know well fight it out what are you fighting out salvation is it your right is it not by grace holiness and dedication is it your right is it not by grace to even be a member of the church is it by right is it not by grace to even have anything to do even to be a doormat in the house of god as david wanted to be is that your right is that not by grace or to be a minister in the house of god or to do anything is that by right is it not by grace what are we fighting out blessed are the meek the opportunity to preach to be in a region to be in a stage is it by right is it not by grace blessed are the meek 
for they shall inherit if we're going to inherit anything in the kingdom of god is by coming before the lord oh lord who am i i'm not qualified i'm not worthy only by grace am i here it's that gentleness it's that humility that will earn you whatever you have in the kingdom they shall inherit the earth blessed are they which do hunger and thirst at righteousness you see actually the lord doesn't want us to thirst and hunger at any other thing at any other thing any other thing it's, it just wants us to hunger and to thirst at a righteousness seek ye for us the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you you know you coordinate us in your region there's nothing to struggle about I've been here now for all these years I should be a group coordinator now don't, don't thirst for that don't thirst for that just stay where you are and group coordinators why didn't they submit my name to be a region of us here what do they know I don't know don't thirst for that just thirst for righteousness if God wants you to be an overseer you will be if he doesn't want you to be if he gives you heaven that's now that's enough blessed are they that hunger and thirst at righteousness for they shall be filled blessed are the merciful have the nature of God and be merciful in the pattern of God and be merciful as the heavenly father is merciful blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy blessed are the pure in heart if you have wrong thoughts in the mind because our thoughts produce our actions our actions produce our habits our habits develop into our character you see a little of it at a time have i told you before that word habit habit at the end of that word you have it 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 just it and when you allow that into your thoughts and then you join the next letter bit just bit little tiny and then the next letter a bit when the h comes in after you've done a bit of this a bit of that a bit of this repeated action of that little thing a bit a bit a bit when you repeat it long enough it becomes a habit very difficult to break very small when it comes in h bit a bit habit and once it becomes a habit then you might not be able to break it in time and then the thoughts in the heart that will affect your habit that will affect your action that will develop your character but blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see god blessed are the peacemakers bridge builders peacemakers blessed are they between you abraham and him lord between you the uh, gideon and them of the people the ephraimites between you and the rest of the world build bridges how long are we going to spend in the world that we allow an uncrossable river when there is any discord when there's any contention there is an uncrossable river between you and him between you and her between you and them build a bridge over that river he may not want to come to you go to them that's what we learn that's jesus christ the prince of peace living within us have we forgotten our calling the blessed are the peacemakers the bridge builders because they shall be called the children of god i don't think i've told you this before i didn't even know this is in the bible i got it from my daddy but please understand you know every time some people are fighting neighborhood because my daddy happened to have a good physique and good health and uh, very difficult to see my father get sick you know he was going all the time until he died it was the last you know that sickness that actually got him down eventually he died. but before he died when he was you know just like a young man like you know like i am <laughs> praise the lord why are you laughing i said when my daddy was a young man like i am 
Put your hands together. <laughs> Amen. I told you the story now. I didn't know you would say laugh, but you know, this is a wonderful thing. I told you the story of somebody who saw me just two years ago, and he said, I'm not 35 years of age. By that calculation, I'm now 37. <laughs> now, when my father was, you know, much, uh, when he was young, if people were fighting, over, once we hear noise of fighting there, my father will leave and say, Daddy, Daddy, where are you going? He will say, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. And then he will go there, he will settle them. I am telling you, he could settle almost anything. And if they had disagreement, he invite them to our house. And they sit down like this and sit down like this. And then he listens to this one and he nods his head. Listens to this one and nods his head. By the time he finishes with them, I'm telling you that, you know, those people, uh, they, are, they just laugh and hold one another's hands and they go their way. And then after they have gone, by being the firstborn in the family, my father will turn to me and say, Remember, blessed are the peacemakers, for they are, shall be called the children of God. I didn't know it was in Matthew chapter 5. Every time I had, and you know, people were fighting every time. And he was a peacemaker every time. But he wasn't even born again at that time. Just didn't like to see people fighting with one another. And then, if my father could be like that, our Heavenly Father is much more like that. He doesn't want to see you contending, fighting with anybody. And the Lord Jesus Christ is only begotten Son. He has come to tell you, Blessed are the peacemakers, the bridge builders, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they, the prophets which were before you, ye are the salt of the earth. And if the salt have lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden on the foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid, neither do men light a candle and put it on a bushel but on a candlestick and it giveth light unto all that are in the house let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven let your light so shine the lord is telling us now that we have had all this now that we have received all this let this light shine let this light shine and let the light so shine whenever we read our bibles <coughs> whenever we read the bible there's some important words that get lost in the reading and as you read this verse let your light so shine there's an important word that get lost as you read is the word so so now, I want you to read that verse without the word so. Just remove the word so. Let your light shine before men. Is that a bad sentence? I said, is it a bad sentence? No. Grammatically, is it a correct sentence? Let your light shine. Let your light shine. It's still okay. Even when you read it like that. But now, when you bring the word so, let your light so shine. What's he telling us? He's telling us, let your light shine to a very high degree. Let your light shine to a great extent. Let your light shine brighter than all the natural lights around. Let your light so shine. Let your light shine to an extraordinary level. Let your light shine with a higher quality of brightness. Let your light so shine. Look at that word so in John chapter 3. John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world. If you remove the word so, God loved the world. That's correct. 
but he so loved the world with extraordinary life that he gave his only begotten son to give his son his only son that's an extraordinary love let your light so shine god so loved the world he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life the word so matthew chapter 6 matthew chapter 6 i'm reading from verse 28 and why take his thought for image consider the lilies of the field how they grow they toil not neither do they spin and yet i say unto you that even solomon in all his glory was not a rage like one of these what's the lord saying that these lilies were so closed in an extraordinary way that even when you compare solomon in all his glory they went beyond the glory of solomon look at verse 30 wherefore if god so close the grass of the field extraordinarily to a high extent the word so is to emphasize the fact that we're not talking about ordinary shining ordinary living ordinary behavior extraordinary wherefore if god so close the grass of the field which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven shall he not much more rather close to you oh you of little faith and then in uh, matthew chapter 8 verse 10 matthew chapter 8 verse 10 it is the story of the centurion that says speak the word only and my servant shall be healed chapter 8 verse 10 when jesus had it he marveled a kind of faith that surprised christ when he had it he marveled and he said unto them that followed verily i say unto you i have not found so great faith i have not found a faith like this great faith like this so great faith no not in israel extraordinary very very high beyond comparison let your light so shine it's telling us then that the level of the shining of the light will not just be like the ordinary shining of the natural man let it have a supernatural uh, part a supernatural effect on it acts of the apostles chapter 14 acts of the apostle chapter 14 verse 1 and it came to pass in iconium that they went both together into the synagogue of the Jews and so spake that a great multitude both of the Jews and also of the Gentiles believed they so spake that is with all their energy with all their wisdom with all their strength and the speech captivated the people that not just a few people a great multitude of the jews and the greeks believe they so speak so that what so let your light so shine make it extraordinary come out of the normal and become supernatural come out of the ordinary and come into the extraordinary as your light is shining and then we're told acts chapter acts chapter 19 verse 20 acts chapter 19 looking at verse 20 so mightily grew the word of god and prevailed so mightily grew the word of god and prevailed that is you know in that ancient world among those israelites and then the gentiles did it have the printed bible like we have now it was just the people carrying it to the places Carry, they carry it here they carry it they carry it there and then as many people are receiving the word of god the word of god was being multiplied in many lives and many hearts and then the bible says so mightily grew the word of god and prevailed on the hearts of the people the word so don't miss it out let your light so shine before me that they may see your good works that even the people that appear blind and they will be having some sensations of the rays of the light coming on them and they may not see clearly but they know that the light is shining let your light so shine before men and then you'll glorify your father when they see your father who is in heaven in philippians chapter 4 verse 1 philippians chapter 4 i'm reading from verse 1 
We're looking for the word so. Philippians 4 verse 1. Therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved, and longed for, my joy and crown, so stand fast. Or you could just have said, stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. Stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. But it means the word so. To tell us a kind of extraordinary level, high level at which we ought to stand fast. So stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. And then in Hebrews chapter 1, Hebrews chapter 1, I'm reading to you from verse 1. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 4, rather, verse 4. Being made so much better than the angels. This is talking about Jesus Christ. Better than the angels, yes. Much better than the angels, yes. But now the word so. So much better than the angels as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 3. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? How shall we escape if we neglect salvation? How shall we escape if we neglect the great salvation? But now when you put the word so, you understand. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? Which are the false began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. The word so. As you look at that passage then, it's telling us something. That will let your light so shine with the inexhaustible oil of grace. Let your light so shine with the inexhaustible oil of love. Let your light so shine with the inexhaustible oil of the Holy Spirit that men may see your good works and then they will glorify your Father who is in heaven. Let your light shine. Let your light so shine. I come to Matthew chapter 5 verse 16. We're speaking about living and laboring for God's glory. I divide the message to three parts. Number one, living for Christ before men for God's glory. Living for Christ before men, before men for God's glory. Number two, laboring in Christ's ministry for God's glory. Laboring in Christ's ministry for God's glory. Number three, likeness to Christ's model of glorifying God likeness to Christ's model of glorifying God number one living for Christ before men for God's glory Matthew chapter 5 reading from verse 16 let your light so shine before men let your light so shine before men you see, when we read the scriptures, we really have to understand. We have to understand. Because, you see, there are people that read those two words, before men, before men, before men. That they put everything on Matthew chapter 6. Look at Matthew chapter 6. Take it. That she do not, that she do not your arms before men, before men, to be seen of them. And yet let your light so shine before men that they may see. How do you understand that? And yet take heed that you do not give your arms before men. That is your purpose of heart is not to attract attention to yourself. That's what, what Jesus is saying in verse 2. Therefore, when thou doest thine arms, do not sound a trumpet before thee to attract attention to yourself. But you go to the world, you want your light to shine before men. That they will see that God has power, not that you are great. To see that God's transforming power is able to take hold of anybody and change anybody. To glorify God. That they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. You see, there are people that say, I don't want to show that I'm religious. 
I don't want to show that I'm righteous. I don't want to show that I'm a churchman. I don't want to show that I'm a Bible believer. I don't want to show that I'm evangelical. I don't want to show that I'm Pentecostal. I want to keep my belief to myself because Jesus said, Do not give your arms. Uh, when you are living right, righteous, that's not giving arms, this is giving arms. You see, people don't understand. And they jumble the scriptures together. Jesus said, Let your light so shine before me live a good life a righteous life a pure life an influential life that will influence people in the way of good sound behavior let your life so shine before men look at matthew chapter 10 i'm reading from verse 30 2 and verse 33 whosoever therefore shall confess me before men read all the scriptures don't just read one verse and run away whosoever therefore shall confess me before me him will i confess before my father which is in heaven but whosoever shall deny me before me when you are supposed to take your stand that you are for the light the light of righteousness the light of the gospel you want that to shine through you then you take a stand you will not say no i don't want them to know that i'm a member of such a church like this i don't want them to know that i believe the whole bible i don't want to i don't want them to know that i'm committed to righteousness and holiness they must know before men in acts of the apostles chapter 19 acts chapter 19 we're reading from verse 18 acts chapter 19 verse 18 and many that believed and confessed showed their deeds and many of them also which should scare us as brought their books together and bunched them before all men they bunched them before all men they were practicing occultism they believed in superstition and they were into magic now they gave their lives to the lord and all the occultic books and materials they were using before they saw they couldn't use them anymore are they going to privately secretly dispose of them no let your light so shine before me let the people know you are not there anymore you are not in that secret society anymore you are not into magic anymore you are not in occultism anymore and then they brought their books together and they bunch them before all men and they counted the price of them and found each 50 pieces of silver you see what the lord is telling us that the life we live is not going to be a secretive life i don't want them to know they must know if you don't want them to know you are ashamed of your conviction you are ashamed of the bible you are ashamed of the gospel but they must know let your light so shine you know even those of us who are leaders you have conviction and as we have conviction to say yes i know my conviction i keep it to myself because if i carry out my conviction what i really entirely believe and I allow the people to see eh, they'll be talking about me and they will not appreciate me i will i know i will practice my conviction with wisdom with wisdom you're actually trying to you avoid persecution you're trying to avoid people speaking against you you actually want to project yourself as if you are in agreement with everybody and you know you are not in agreement with them that's why you're saying i don't want to carry out my conviction here we are now in the congress and uh, you know all the other people i know what they do they don't read bible in the morning if i kneel now i have roommate if i kneel down every time say good morning and they want to chat and i want to do you see how things happen last time do you see how really i don't do that normally and i don't like it but if i don't respond to him he'll then go to all our other friends and say see so and so it's not social you are living in the same room and he doesn't you know when you greet him he's you know glued to the bible as if you know he is a region of us here i'm a region of us here and we know the bible too together and then you greet is holy 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 and then when we come out and then we're coming his friends that are Joe will look at you and say quiet time quiet time quiet time then you feel embarrassed as they say that that you said you see now i shouldn't have carried my quiet and conviction into this place see the way they are making fun of me now let your light so shine before me whatever they will say carry out your conviction what you believe internally carry it out don't be a hypocrite and don't be somebody that has yes this is what i know inside my heart and what i'm telling you i do 
whatever I want to do anywhere, that's what I do. Anywhere I travel to. When I go to even places that are not deep alive and they invite me to preach, if they are playing their kind of music or whatever, if I don't agree in my spirit, I just sit down. And uh, you know, there are, there are times that, you know, sometimes you don't understand. There was a minister that, uh, you know, was not living right many, many years ago. And then he came to our university, our selection and the university then. And, you know, they invited him. I didn't want to attend, but the, you know, Christian Union people there said, Sir, you're a lecturer here. Everybody knows that you're a preacher too. And we have this program and so and so is coming. Uh, please come and attend the meeting. I said, no, I'm sorry. I don't want to attend this meeting. Then they talked and talked and prevailed. I said, please, I don't want to be in this meeting. It said, so and so is coming. I said, I know, I don't want to be there. But he pleaded and then i then i went there i took my bible with me and then i got there then i sat in the congregation i didn't want to sit on the platform then they came to me again and he said sir please please and i knew why i was avoiding to be on the platform because of my conviction i knew that if i was there things were not going to be all right and so they, they pleaded again i said okay then i went to the platform and sat down and the man began to preach and he demonstrated and this, this and that. I just sat quietly there looking at him. All his drama. Then when he finished, he said, Now, I want to demonstrate to you how to have the Holy Ghost. He said, in, a demo in such a dramatic kind of minister. He said in demonstration. He said, uh, then he called my name. He said, please come. Let, let's walk together. I said, no, we can't walk together. <laughs> and uh, then he said, now please then he was talking to me away from the microphone he was using the standing mic he, he went away from the mic said please you know this is a crowd these people don't you know let's cooperate i said but i can't cooperate with you and then he said kneel down so i, I just want to demonstrate to them lay hands i said me lay hands on me you can't do that we took about five minutes before me all of them there and when he saw that i wasn't bulging then he turned around and, and then he, he you know made up himself and adjusted and then he prayed for the people when he finished i called him when i called him i called the president of the christian union there i said now you saw the drama on the pulpit that i didn't yield to this your preacher i said now i hear you have illegitimate child out of wedlock before that president i said this is the way you are living you are not living right here you are coming talking about talking about the holy ghost and you are not living right this is not deeper life it wasn't a deeper life meeting let your light so shine before me whatever conviction i have i carry it out anywhere and you know the man did not say no it is not really said pastor Fumui, you know how difficult the ministry is many people are not praying for me that is why i get into this kind of problem i say uh -huh. well you know you are such a problem why did you come here shouting then you wanted me to submit to you lay hands on me before the people when i had something i wanted to talk to you about and i'm not his pastor if i can do that to a respected preacher and pastor that is coming for another place i'll do that in deeper life that's why i carry out my conviction let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works stand for something and let us know that this is where you are standing that's why i do the way i do i've always been like that and my prayer is i will never change <laughs> You know, if I can have those of you here, you remember when the other preacher was preaching, the other thing he said, Wesley said, give me 100 men that fear nothing but sin, and then we can turn the world upside down. If all of you here will have the same fire I have, the same conviction I have, the same decision I have taken, and you go anywhere to your places of work, anywhere you are, and you say, today I have got it, you will get it. Yeah. And you say my light is going to so shine before men that men will see my good works and they will glorify my father who is in heaven there will be revival in africa yeah. and so we read in the word of god as you come to romans chapter 12. romans chapter 12. romans chapter 12 verse 
17. Romans chapter 12, verse 17. Recompense to no man. Evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men before me. In the sight of all men. What you do? Things that are honest. You present that before all men. If you are an honest man in your place of work, let us understand it. Let everybody see it. If it be possible, as much as lies in you, live peaceably with all men. Demonstrate that peace before all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves. But rather give place unto wrath. For it is written in vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. Therefore, if an enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt keep coals of fire upon his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Overcome evil with good. Let your light so shine before men. Leave that life out. Let people know this is where you stand. And then they will give their lives to the Lord. In Romans chapter 16 verse 19. Romans chapter 16 verse 19. For your obedience is come abroad unto all men. Your obedience is come abroad unto all men i am glad therefore on your behalf but yet i would have your wise unto that which is good and simple innocent concerning evil in philippians chapter 4 philippians chapter 4 reading from verse 5 philippians 4 5 let your moderation be known unto all men. Let it be known. Let them know that you are moderating your dressing. Wedding time, funeral time, ceremonial time, Christmas time, Easter time, every time. Let your moderation be known unto all men. That now you have come to work, maybe you are, you are promoted, and you are working in a place now that is higher than where you were before. All the same, all the same. Let your moderation be known unto all men. Don't say, well, I wear this to the church. But when I'm going into society, because of the crowd I'm mixing with now, I wear this other one. If it's not all right in the church, it's not all right all, all over there to you. You're not just a Christian in the church. You are a Christian everywhere. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. Be worried for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, my brethren, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are pure, what, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Let that be the focus of your life, the pattern of your life. Because now, every day and every moment of the day, this is how you want to live. First Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 12. First Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 12 and verse 13. And the Lord make you increase. I said, The Lord make you increase. Yeah. And abound in love, one toward another. And toward all men, even as we do toward you, to the end, he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before God. Even our Father, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all the saints. In First Thessalonians chapter 5, First Thessalonians 5, reading verses 14 and 15. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly do you do that anymore one day that are unruly and it's not just talking to 
the preachers he says i beseech you brethren do we watch over one another I w do we care about what other people do do we care about how other people behave warn them that are unruly and comfort the feeble-minded i know we do that one when somebody is sad when somebody is sorrowful when somebody is being overcome by a problem i know we go to them and we comfort them we encourage them and if we have some good faith cases we even give them why do we do the second and then we abandon the first why do we only comfort the feeble-minded and we don't want the people that are really support the weak be patient toward all men see that none render evil for evil to any man but ever follow that which is good both among yourselves and to all men let your light so shine before men let's come back to matthew chapter 5 matthew chapter 5 verse 16 i come to point number two laboring in christ's ministry for god's glory laboring in christ's ministry for god's glory matthew chapter 5 verse 16 matthew 5 16 let your light so shine before men well we are allowing our light to shine before men because we represent christ he is the light of the world and we are the light of the world and we reflect his light and because we reflect his light therefore we come with the light of christ the light of the gospel the light of the word of god the light that is shining and burning with the oil of the holy spirit in our lives and then we're living before men we're not isolating ourselves we're not secluding ourselves after all light is not useful unless men are there to see that light uh, do you notice that if uh, there is nothing to see and nothing to watch and nothing to actually look at you put up the lights but you turn on the lights when people are there and uh, you see but sure sometimes we turn on the lights uh, so that uh, people will not come and steal yes because there's a person that is watching because is that that's why you turn on the light if you turn on the light and nobody is there, the thief will still come and take away what they want to take. You turn on the light because of the possibility that when that thief is coming, there will be somebody that's making use of that light and seeing everything very clearly. You turn the light before men. If the men are not there, then the light is useless. And if we just hide ourselves, I'm shining as light, but I can't see it. Oh, you say, Pastor, you can't see it, but you know, I know I'm shining. It's useless if we can't see it. If your wife can't see it, if your husband can't see it, your family can't see it, if the people of God cannot see it, if the people in the world cannot see your light shining, it's useless. Let your light so shine before men that they may see, that those men may see. And when they see, they will glorify God, your Father. We're told in Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 8. Ephesians chapter 2 reading from verse 8 for by grace are you saved through faith that not of yourselves it is the gift of god not of works lest any man should boast for we are his workmanship now we are born again he has worked on us and we are now his workmanship created created uh, created in Christ Jesus unto good works he has saved us our sins are washed away we belong to the Lord he has given us a renewed life a new nature out of that new nature new life now he has created us unto good works and because he has created us unto good works we practice that we leave it out we labor in good works before men every time which god has before did that we should walk in them second timothy chapter 3 second timothy chapter 3 reading verses 16 and 17 all scripture is given by inspiration of god and is profitable for doctrine for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all 
good works. The reason the Lord has given us the scriptures. And the reason the Lord has given us interpreters of the scriptures and preachers of the word of God is so that we will be able to produce good works. The good Lord has touched us and the good Christ has transformed us and the good spirit has done something in our lives and therefore the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit they have all influenced us to live a righteous life and to do good. And so he says, the scripture is given to us then, that we may be thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Now he tells us in 2 Timothy chapter 2, 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 19. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having the seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity, for in, but in a great house. They are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself. Now, when you are going to the public, what do you do? If you have been, you know, in the house, you didn't take your bath, now you want to go to the public, what do you do? You change your clothes. Then you wash, you clean up, and you put on good clothes because now you are going to the public. If you are coming to the public and before men, what do you do? You make sure you readjust yourself very well. It's not just your outward dressing, you are just your character, your lifestyle, your attitude. So that as they see you outside, your light will so shine. You know that people are making comparison in their minds all the time. Every time somebody sees you, if he says you're all right, before he says you're all right, he's making a comparison of what he has in mind as to what is all right. He has another picture, another part, another model in the mind. And he's saying you're all right because he feels you are comparable to that other pattern. When he says, ah, why are you like this today? This is not good. He's making a comparison between you and what he holds as a model, as the standard. And when he says, ah, uh ah, -uh, you are better than the people have known, he's making a comparison. When he uses the word, you are lower, he's making comparison. When he says you're all right, he's making comparison. When he says you are better, he's making comparison. When you go to the public, when you live in the public, when you walk in the public, anything you are doing before men, they are always making comparison. That's why Jesus said, they will make comparison. They will evaluate your behavior. They will evaluate your language. They will evaluate your action. They will evaluate your interaction. Therefore, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works before you go out to your wash and before you go to meet people. Look at this. Say, man, therefore, purge himself. From this, it shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. Prepared unto every good work. It wants us to be conscious of that. That will manifest good work. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. I'm reading to you from verse 16 and verse 17. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself And God even our Father Which has loved us And has given us everlasting consolation And good hope through grace Comfort your hearts And establish you In every good word and work Establish you In every good word and work that means then your life must be full of good words what you speak and also good works what you do and we're told in titus chapter 2 verse 7 titus chapter 2 verse 7 in all things showing thyself a pattern of good works in all things in all things in all things any time and every time whatever you are doing any moment of time you are conscious of the fact others watch me let your light shine before men when you go to uh, another stage 
and people you are new to the people they are watching you let your light so shine before men as we are in the hostel together and you know if you are talkative they are watching and if you are going to preach you know sometimes they are surprised they are surprised if uh, you know the people saw you out there and they didn't know that you were coming to preach here and they saw you out there frivolous and careless and joking with you know some uh, kind of uh, restricted words and just careless and frivolous out there and people didn't actually know you you know because we are very many here they don't know all our preachers and then after all that joke and frivolity and you know somebody is standing and watching and says, ah, these congress people always all that the pastor is preaching look at this man not knowing that you are a preacher and then the very next uh, time now you know he comes into the hall and sits near the front and then he sees you you take the songbook and stand up and let us sing he says what so that man that i saw outside the one that is so frivolous and careless so is the one even going to preach let me hear what he's going to preach then you become fiery and then you preach according to exodus according to deuteronomy it says watch this thing is just a uh, theater arts anybody can learn it anybody can do it this one is just drama because i saw him outside anywhere you are they are comparing you with people that's the reason why you let your light so shine before men anywhere anytime and then it says in this titus chapter 2 reading verse 7 in all things showing thyself a pattern of good works in doctrine showing of corruptness gravity sincerity sound speech that cannot be condemned that he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed having nothing having no evil to say of you verse 14 and let ours also learn to maintain good works for necessary uses that they be not unfruitful you see what the lord is telling us is telling us that this pattern of good works this pattern of good works must be what he wants us to demonstrate our god is good and his promise and his, he promises the everlasting covenant to do good and jesus went about doing good and then the holy spirit is good you give them your good spirit to guide and to lead them what's the priority of our lives then the priority of your life the priority of my life is to do good and we will do good Amen. have you had this quotation before write it down do all the good you can the first line do all the good you can by all the means you can you write that under the first line don't write everything on the straight line write this under the next line by all the means you can the next line in all the ways you can have you written that the next line in all the places you can in all the places you can the next line at all the times you can at all the times you can the next line to all the people you can to all the people you can the last line as long as ever you can have we reaching that now let me read everything to you do all the good you can you think about yourself you find yourself this is a new day now this is just the morning and then you make up your mind you make a covenant a commitment to the lord i'm going to do all the good i can except i can't do it is there anything we cannot do well sometimes you know you need a jack to be able to pull up the car 
I may not be able to do it with your natural strength, but all the other things you can do. Do all the good you can by all the means you can. With all the methods available for you with all the resources available for you and with all the ingenuity and the wisdom available to you by all the means you can in all the ways you can he said this way do good you turn this way do good you turn the other way do good in all the ways you can in all the places you can don't allow doing good to be restricted so just this place all the places you can everywhere you go that's that's what you are created for that's what you are made for that's why you are saved that's why you have come into the kingdom at such a time like this in all the places you can you want to do good that your light so shine anywhere you go then it says at all the times you can all the times you can even when it appears you are not feeling very very strong you know, Charles H. Uh, Spurgeon. Spurgeon uh, was an evangelical a Baptist and a good, good Baptist. And uh, where well, he didn't understand healing, divine healing, or healing by prayer, he understood a lot about prayer. Just that aspect of prayer on healing, he didn't understand. He became sick. And then when he became sick, remember, you are to do good at all the times you can. And then uh, Spurgeon says, since I can't go out to preach, it's so weak and so sick. Then he now adds this project of writing the treasury of David. That is writing commentary on all the Psalms of David. Big, big volumes, three volumes that you have, Psalm 1 to Psalm 150. And it's so deep, there is no comparison in the commentary on the Psalms anywhere in the christian world no no comparison although he was sick and then lying down in the on the bed of affliction and sickness and since he couldn't be going out to preach because of this sickness then he employed his time at this time of weakness and sickness to write this commentary on the psalms and is the best you can ever read on the Psalms because it brought in many other commentators on the Psalms. At all the times you can, do good. And then to all the people you can, to all the people you can, you can do good in that city, go there and do good. You can do good in that state, go there and do good. You can do good in that community, go there and do good. And then as ever, as, as long as ever you can. As long as you are still alive, as long as you are still breathing, let me read it again to you now, you understand. Do all the good you can, by all the means you can, in all the ways you can, at all the times you can, to all the people you can, as long as ever you can, do good, we will do good. Amen. Let's come to Matthew chapter 5, I come to point number 3, likeness to Christ's model of glorifying God likeness to christ's model of glorifying god we're looking at matthew chapter 5 verse 16 let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven the reason for doing the good works is so that the people that see the good works as we're going back home every day for the rest of our lives is so that it will bring glory unto the lord now how did jesus do it what was the pattern of the life of jesus in john chapter 17 verse 4 john 17 verse 4 i have glorified thee on the earth i have finished the work which thou gavest me to do i have glorified thee on the earth and i finished the work which thou givest me to do that's how jesus glorified the word the lord he concentrated on what the father had appointed for him to do he will not branch this way he will not branch that way do you remember when the jews after they had eaten the bread that he multiplied miraculously they wanted to take him by force and make him a king but that's not what the lord has called him to do at that time the lord told him to go and be a sacrifice for the salvation of the world 
and because there was to be a sacrifice that's what was to concentrate on at that time just suffering and just a sacrifice to bleach be crucified and to die for the sins of humanity since that was what he was called for he concentrated on that what are you called for what are you supposed to do do it with all your strength all your mind and all the knowledge that you have and be like jesus christ so you can say at the end of the day at the end of each day lord today from morning till this time i have glorified thee on the earth i finished the work you appointed for me to do don't procrastinate finish the work of the day finish the assignment of the day finish the thing the lord has given you to do for that day and then you'll be able to say at the end of that day i've glorified thee on the earth for today i finished the work you have given me to do at the end of the week you should be able to look back and say thank the lord this is a different week now I've finished what the lord gave me to do for this week at the end of the month check up every time and then at the end of life you'll be able to look back and say praise the lord i did not live a wasted life a useless life a life without consequence you'll be able to say i became a christian at such a year and looking at all the years and looking at it at this time now ready to go home lord i have glorified thee on the earth and i've finished the work that you gave me to today you can turn it back down to other people and other people can continue where you start that's what the lord wants us to do in, in john chapter 15 verse 8 john 15 verse 8 herein is my father glorified that he bear much fruit herein is my father glorified that he bear much fruit so shall ye be my disciples we're told in first peter chapter 2 first peter chapter 2 i'm reading from verse 9 in first peter chapter 2 verse 9 but he a chosen generation a royal priesthood and holy nation a peculiar people that he should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light that's what he wants you to show forth that's what he wants you to demonstrate that's what he wants you to live out in the presence of the people you are not ordinary you're a chosen generation and you are not just among the among the dicks and harris you are a royal priesthood and you are not among the normal natural sinful unrighteous people of the land you are an holy nation and then you are not of the ordinary you are extraordinary because it says a peculiar people that ye should show forth that ye should show forth and we shouldn't be able to tell that you have any personal internal family problem we should be able to know that you are a child of god and you are shining forth as this light all the time i told you before long ago one of my pastors when i before we before i became a minister myself that uh, you know my pastor he had invited some people to come and as he invited these people to come to share the gospel with them it was like around the public holiday or so and uh, you know it's uh, they have uh, like a duplex living upstairs and then you sit downstairs to get uh, to allow their guests invitees to socialize with them and uh, one of the children had been sick and uh, so the child was upstairs and the mother that's his own wife taking care of the um, of the food for these guests and the sickness of that child became so bad and the mother left the kitchen downstairs to go upstairs just to go and look at it just to check up on the child and the child had died and so the mother normally as a mother was so concerned and here was pastor the husband talking with these people you know explaining things to them and trying to lead them to the lord into the gospel and the mother and the wife ran down whispered to says our child is dead and so he didn't show any emotion he didn't show any reaction he just said please leave her in the hand of god go and finish the food for these people in the kitchen and the woman obeyed 
and Oman kept on, you know, cooking and all that. And while the pastor was still talking to these people, God touched that child upstairs and woke up. And the child that had been so sick that couldn't even get up, the mother had to be taking care of the child, dressed up and came uh, to the father and then embraced the father and the father did not show any emotion and the father just, you know, drew the child to himself, sat down and that father continued his work evangelizing and talking to those people. It's after those people had gone after he led them to the Lord and they had, you know, there was a good real fellowship after they had gone. Then he now asked the wife, tell me the rest of the story. See, the mood did not change. The, the emotion did not change that whatever is happening in your family, you are light to shine. What a great opportunity for you that whatever personal problem you have, whatever personal difficulty you have, and whatever may be going on, you don't show that to the public. And you just let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works, they will see. And many, many people, you are going to draw to the Lord in Jesus' name. In verse 12, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 12, having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, by your good works, by your good works, which they shall behold, which they shall see, glorify God in the day of visitation. Your life will glorify God. Your life will bring a lot of people to the Lord. As we uh, round up, let's look at this Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. Let your light so shine. Let it shine. You know the word let? Let. Have, have you come across that word before? God said unto Moses, let me, don't hold me, don't hold me back. Let my anger wax hot against them. Moses, you are holding me, you are restraining me, you are stopping me. Get out of the way. I don't want to push you down. Just let me, allow me, that's what it means. Permit me, that's what it means. Give me chance, that's what it means. What does this mean? Let your light so shine. Permit your light to shine. Don't allow your emotion or your mood or your difficulty or your challenges in life. Stop this light. Allow it to shine. Permit it to shine. Let it shine and it will shine. Let your light so shine before men. When you get before men, don't be afraid of any man. I have a responsibility. I have a challenge. Before this man is high. Before this man is an elite. Before this man is a rich man. Before this man is a man from our village. Before this man is an enemy of our family. Before this man, all these men, don't allow them to intimidate you. You know that I just have one thing to do and it is to shine. Let your light so shine before men that they may see if they don't see let it shine more if they have not seen it let it shine more until they see they must see i said they must see if they have not seen that you are holy a uh, high chain that holiness if they have not seen that you are righteous ex um, increase that uh, righteousness and holiness if they have not seen the power of god in your life demonstrate it more if they have not seen it it's not shining enough let it so shine so that men will see and when they see until they begin to say we we'll praise you for this man we we'll praise you for the grace we we'll praise you for the energy we we'll praise you for the shining of the light because because of what you are doing in him we also want to come to the lord that's how your light will shine and then your life will be a glory to the lord and you'll pull many people into the kingdom rise up and tell the lord as you're going back home this is what you will do your light will shine your light will shine your light will shine it will show the grace of god it will show the power of god it will show the goodness of god permit that light to shine Permit that light to shine. Allow that light to shine. Let your light so shine. Let your light so shine. Let your light so shine before me that they may see. That they may see. That they may see. They may see your good works. And then they will glorify your Father who is in heaven. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. 
let your light so shine before men until they see your good works and then will they glorify your father who is in heaven Okay, um, I remember I came here without um, scholarship to Harvard University. The first year wasn't easy, but I got a grant that paid half of my tuition. But then from second year, I got like five different scholarships from my department. So I just thank God, third year, the same thing. And I thank God because I'll be graduating in May. I didn't have to stay out for a I just thank God for all this provision. I just blessed you with grace.